Okay, apart from the clickbaity title, today we're going to take a look at what's now known as Adobe Podcast. About a year ago, just almost exactly a year ago, it launched as Project Shasta uh, at Adobe. Recently getting this rebrand, still has the beta tag uh, slapped on it. You can find it at podcast.adobe.com. I just want to talk about some of my experiences with it since they've just rebranded it to more podcast-focused, front and center, and talk about how it might compare up to Descript. Uh, with the caveats of, yes, Adobe Podcast still in beta, although sometimes Descript still feels like it's in beta as it constantly rolls out new features. But a Descript is definitely, which is odd enough to say, a more professional, easy to use podcasting tool um, with all of the, the bells and whistles that they have in it. And of course, now they're focused on uh, video, maybe too much as well than they are just audio. So I'm going to play some clips, some test clips of recording that I did with Adobe Podcast in a little bit, compare that up to just recording directly into this microphone versus Descript, and more importantly, how their AI uh, did with repairing audio. So I'll explore that in a second. But let's just talk about the interface. I mean, let's just put the 100 million pound gorilla <laughs> into the room, is if you're an Adobe customer uh, and you're maybe using it on the professional level with Adobe Audition, producing podcasts at a real high level with a high skill set of audio engineering, uh, this tool is going to be a lot easier for you to recommend to your own cl clients, your own customers, or if you're a designer uh, that uses Adobe Photoshop or you're a photographer and you're just using Adobe Lightroom, having this as a very easy to use add-on component to make podcasts is probably going to be a breath a fresh air when you start looking around at all the other tools available for, uh, on the on the market. But more importantly, hey, if this is part of your Adobe workflow or your Adobe account, chances are you're just going to stick with using something like this. So it's going to be the leg up, uh, definitely, in the industry for existing Adobe customers. And I think that's where they're really going to focus their effort in. When we just take a look at the dashboard of Adobe Podcasts, you, again, this is all in beta. Depending on when you watch this, a lot of this stuff can be moved around. Everything seems, I don't know, big, right? It's just very easy, very big. It doesn't lend to something that you're going to have hundreds or thousands of audio projects in this collaborating with a bunch of users. Again, not at this point. Um, you know, it's not going to have this big overarching sort of like a heck if you looked at Lightroom, for instance, or Adobe's media uh, controller, like that's just made for lots of stuff this seems like light duty work only. What I like is they're ha they have these uh, templates set up of just a handful of them right now where you can click on if you wanted to make a deep space podcast. I mean, probably most of this stuff is just to show off what Adobe Podcast can do, but a podcast ad, we'll click into this, sort of just sets the stage for somebody who, hey, I want to make a podcast ad for my podcast. So we'll create the project. And this is the interface. This is what it looks like. And this is just the most basic template uh, as possible. Has a 15 second runtime. It's this music bed uh, that you can see right here in sort of the pinkish red track. And then the text here, we'll hit play. Quickly and easily make standout content from beautiful templates with Adobe Express. Make stunning graphics and video stories and so this is probably, you know, all that the most basic entry level user needs to visualize. Uh, when it comes to making a podcast ad. And again, speaking specifically about advantages with Adobe Podcast, for that entry-level user, templates as basic as this is, is a great step uh, in the right direction to get somebody off the ground and moving so that they can actually see the samples. And they might play and replace the, uh, the audio bed or the music bed and put in their own audio, of course, but at least gives you uh, a starting point. Uh, and if we're just looking at this screen specifically, very easy, very intuitive. Uh, if, you know, you can see Descript here sneaking in the background, this is much more of a more complex uh, app that you're using, that you're in. You're editing a lot more. You're fine-tuning a lot of transitions, audio beds, music, um, videos. Uh, you can do audiograms. You can do all these things, motion graphics. But even this <clears throat> is easier than Adobe Premiere, uh, ScreenFlow, uh, and these more advanced these more advanced apps. So this is really, really entry point. And it's kind of obvious when you have only three major control features, like adding a placeholder, adding music, uh, or uploading your own, uh, your own files to, to the project. 
Uh, other things I like about it, very easy to understand. I would definitely recommend this to somebody who was just starting out looking for something easy to use. Uh, you can add in these placeholders. So I could, if I was working with uh, consulting on somebody on a podcast, I might say, this is a great place. This is a great place to add that clip from your interview. And I can sort of leave these notes around or I can mention that, hey, this is, a, uh, this is where music should go, um, that kind of thing. So when you're collaborating with people, yeah, this is really, really nice. It doesn't give you the granularity, of course, uh, of Descript, but again, Descript is a much more, you know, mature project compared to Adobe Podcasts. Another advantage that <laughs> Adobe Podcasts will have, especially as uh, time marches on, is you can get some really great either B-roll, I'm sure they're going to bring in B-roll video clips in the future, but getting uh, access to uh, audio transitions, um, intros, outros, this is really sharp, really easy to understand. Now, Descript is finally getting into that, uh, along with what they're doing uh, with video, with all the video work that they're doing. Uh, and they have a, a pretty decent collection, but uh, I think Adobe's going to win on that usability. Like, it just looks better, feels better for the beginner. The experienced person, yeah, you might want to spend a lot of time in the archives of Descript, and you're, and you're more willing to do that because you have a more, probably more complex show. Uh, and lastly... When we look, when we go back to uh, the dashboard here, there are some tools that you can actually try right now. You can enhance your speech by uploading your own audio clips and it'll just process it for you. So if we click this, uh, this will bring you to that enhance, enhance speech page. You could just send audio file to it right now and try to remove some of the background noise. You, they have a sample right here, we'll play that. I'm in a conference room with the window open and it's pretty echoey in here too. Not the best place to record audio yet with enhanced speech so you can kind of see what that does and uh studio sound in descript uh, attempts to do the same thing uh, i'm going to play those clips in the, in the end and you might be pleasantly surprised on how adobe does that so they've got some free tools here for you to play with even if you don't want to use it as a full-blown um, uh, audio editing uh, project base and lastly this is really where i think adobe is going to be uh, an even bigger gorilla in the room is graphic templates. They have a whole online graphic editor through uh, Adobe Express and of course Adobe Photoshop and all the other tools that they have for it. It's really gonna be a, a hub for somebody to come in and create graphics, uh, record their podcast uh, with a colleague or with a guest and then edit right there. Um, the only thing that's left is to publish it to Castos at the end of the day. So if you're from Adobe and you want to send uh, over all your customers to Castos, I'd love to have that conversation. Uh, but it's going to do everything there for you in terms of producing that show. The question is, how complex of a show is it going to be? How much are you really going to spend in that really nice, easy uh, graphic editor? Because as we know, if you're a Descript user coming from, let's say, Adobe Audition or Hindenburg or something like that, and you're so used to working with uh, tracks and timelines and moving stuff around, editing in text isn't always the most comfortable uh, or the most accurate. A lot of great things that Descript does, like removing filler words and gap, uh, gap clips, being able to do all these things, copy-paste text to you know, move audio around. But sometimes when you're doing a complex show, uh, a lot of storytelling, a lot of sound design, it gets pretty tedious uh, with Descript. And I don't see it being any easier uh, with Adobe because it's such a simplified platform, which, you know, just lends to a different sort of creator. Okay, let's uh, get to playing the test clips and you can guess which ones are uh, Adobe, which ones are Descript, and which ones are from this microphone right here. Okay, three clips, uh, one from Adobe with my laptop microphone from about a foot and a half to two feet away, another one in Descript, uh, foot and a half away on my laptop microphone. And then the third one will be on uh, the Rodecaster Pro hooked up to this SM7B. Can you guess which one is which? Remember the Adobe and the Descript, the whole point of recording on the laptop microphone was to test their AI repair abilities. Here we go, clip one. Those who want power are the ones who least deserve it. Elvis is in the building. As the saying goes, be careful what you wish as you might get it. Should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the results of this poll 
And finally, going forward, there will be a vote for major policy changes. My apologies. Won't happen again. Those who want power are the ones who least deserve it. Elvis is in the building. As the saying goes, be careful what you wish, as you might get it. Should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the results of this poll. Going forward, there will be a vote for major policy changes. My apologies, won't happen again. Those who want power are the ones who least deserve it. Elvis is in the building. As the saying goes, be careful what you wish, as you might get it. Should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the results of this poll. Going forward, there will be a vote for major policy changes. My apologies, won't happen again. So if it wasn't obvious enough, clip number three is the podcast recording setup. So that leaves clip one and two uh, as either Adobe or Descript. Which one is clip one? Which one is clip two? Clip one is Adobe. Clip two is Descript. Uh, hands down, I feel like Adobe AI repair tool did a phenomenal job uh, compared to Descript. I've never really liked the studio sound quality that Descript has as their sort of AI uh, sort of repair tool. Things I'm assuming will get better now that there's a lot of funding from OpenAI into uh, Descript. But man, Adobe has a, a real advantage there. It sounds really great. There's just a toggle button with Adobe Podcast to either turn that repair tool on or off. With Descript, uh, when you enable studio sound, it runs through its, its whole AI um, algorithm and all that stuff, but you can ha there's a sliding scale on how much you can apply to the recording, though I could never really dial it into anything that was really worth listening to. I mean, I've used it to re repair some really bad uh, stuff before from interviews that I've done with guests, but really only in small areas and not throughout uh, an entire episode. So uh, there it is, Adobe uh, sounding really good with their AI. Have you tried Adobe Podcast yet? Will you try it? Are you using Descript? What do you love? What do you don't? Let me know in the comments below. Do you have another favorite sort of AI repair tool, something I haven't seen yet? Let me know. We'll get that up on the channel. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.